Carrillo. Good afternoon, this is Vidal Carrillo with California Scenes. I'm here with the lovely Jeannie Walsh. She's the author of the book, Wired Wrong. It's a really uh, heartfelt book that she wrote uh, to help people, a book about her life and her success and struggles. So I'd like to expand a little bit more about that. And Jeannie, uh, why did you write the book? Um, well, I first started out at attending the Academy of Art University, and my first experience with like writing was backstage at New York Fashion Week. I always reported on the beauty trends, and that was when I kind of got my fix for like wanting to like I know this is what I want to do. I want to continue writing. I, wanna, I at that moment in time, though, I did not know I wanted to write a book. And um, but that experience and, and getting my master's degree in, in journalism, I knew this was like I always thought I was going to be writing for the Colossians. I did not know it was going to turn to this. So it did a big, you know, uh, 180 for me, you know, 360, if you will. I guess that's what it would be into something completely different. And um, it was more like when I would talk to people and tell them the story of my life growing up, they're like, you have such a story to tell, you should really write a, write a book. And um, I had 15 years of journals, 15 years of journals that I've been collecting. And, and So there is a reason behind having all those journals. It was, it was. At, at the time being, it, for me, it was just getting my thoughts down and dealing with my day-to-day -day, day -day, um life struggles because I suffer from borderline personality disorder, um, bipolar, anxiety dis dis disorder, um, and disassociative fuse. So I have quite a few things that I'm di diagnosed with. And um, so it's been quite a struggle. And I, um, it took all the way until I'm here now, I'm 54, to get to this point in my life where I was able to do that and feel like I have the information and knowledge that I can share with others to help, first of all, destigmatize the way people look at mental health and the shame that comes with it, and to help others know that they're not alone and it's okay to talk about it. Well, you're helping to turn really bad into good in a way by helping the people heal and, like you said, understand that they're not by themselves. Yes. The other people have gone through this and come out the other side. Yes. So, uh, Let's expand a little bit about your younger days, okay? And I'm, you know, I was reading a little bit of the book, which is amazing. I just got it last night, yesterday, and I flipped through it, couldn't stop looking at it. Um, and you talk in there, kind of in the beginning part, about your father, and that um, apparently, like when you were a youngster or when you were young, um, that he was your hero. You said that in the book, actually, that he was your hero, and yet. He's the one actually came out with the title "Why that you're wired wrong," yes. which in a way, in my mind, anyways, I don't know what the other people think. A out lot there, of people find it think, offensive. Yes, they think it's offensive and think it's something that's degrading to you, you know, like degrading to somebody. But can you expand on that? Why you think your dad was a hero, or was there a way that it helped to shape you or, or motivate you or something? Okay, so can you expand on that, please? Absolutely. So my, my dad has always been my hero, and he still to this day is, even though he's no longer in my life, and I can talk about that at a later point, but um, he always worked two jobs, worked really hard. I was a very, very difficult child, and but the reason the book is called Why Wrong is because back then they did not know what bipolar and borderline personality disorder was, and he would always refer to me and say, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry you're wired wrong, honey. And um, I just have always lived with that title, like yeah. being wired wrong. Mm. And it's, 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 it's just to become the norm for me to be called wired wrong. And I've accepted right. it. Even though it might be a controversial title, there's a reason I chose it. And I chose it, it to honor my father, even though he's not in my life anymore, to, but to honor him for, you know, I think he did his best and he tried, but if you read the book, there is some stuff that I went through a lot of childhood trauma with my family, not knowing how to handle me, like at moments leaving me on the side of the road, kicking wow. me out of the car, things like that. Um, mm. So there's a lot that goes along with that, but I, I just felt it was the appropriate title for the story. Yeah, that's, that is pretty deep. Um, you know, most people, most parents, I know myself, I mean, especially when a child is younger or in teenage years, you, you give them motivation, positive things for them to go. They're not always positive, but you try to. But anyway, so I'm glad 
that you know you have had a relationship with your dad that's been positive. He's helped to you have to get through things, yes. and you are at so a great he did place the best now. He could. He did the yeah, best he was he in could. the military, and you know he, he served the country, and I give him a lot of props for that. My dad was a Marine at 17, so I understand the deal. And you know they they are from a generation that they're go getters, they're doers. They don't they don't they did it. They just went out there and did it. They didn't say, oh, well, I'm gonna do this and that. But they just went and did it you know, for us. So I respect them. Um, let's get to another question. Um, when did you realize you wanted to be a writer? Um, it was after sharing my story with a lot of people, like just friends and family, and they're like, oh my goodness, you have like so much to tell. Like, you really should write a story about your life growing up and all the trauma that you've been through and everything that you've overcome and where you're at today as a creative director, journalist, you know, um, I've been a model, brand ambassador, I'm brand, right now I'm a brand ambassador for Sprouts and somehow I always have this connection with people. People find it very easy to talk to me. And um, well, Excuse me for a second. Now Sprouts is a major um, yes. grocery chain, right? Yes. Healthy food. Yes. Okay. And we brought, I brought mental health il illness into the workplace environment. Uh, so now we discuss it. That's amazing, and that is awesome. And I, I give credit a lot of credit to Sprouts. Mm -hmm. They could be our new sponsor here. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but that they would allow you to share your story with other people, and people come to see you. So when they come to my table, and I'm ser I'm serving like the samples and stuff. Right. People, I do talk about mental health. I, wow. And then people sometimes will cry. They'll, and they'll, I've had people tell me I was going to kill myself today and just cry in my arms. Sometimes I don't know what it is about me that attracts people to me that they feel like they can just open up to me. Right. But may maybe because I don't like I'm just. A, I'm an open source for like, you know, I'm very accepting, I'm very forgiving, I'm very empathetic. Yes. I can understand what people have gone through because I've gone through it. But it took a long time to get the right support group behind me to be able to do what I, I, I'm doing. And I had 15 years of journals mm. and that right. is my suggestion to anyone who has a mental health illness is to definitely journal. Journal and not let not, them know not, out there. Yes, journal, journal your thoughts down daily. You know, and I, 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 it definitely helps. I did not ever think back in the day that my 15 years of journals would turn into a book. So, um, but it, it helps, and it helps me to reflect back on what I went through and to learn and grow and learn my life lessons. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for your, for the way you are, for helping people. Thank that's you. what we're called to do. That's, that's what the mission. Lord wants us to do. Yes. Help feel, each other. I feel like that's my calling is to help other people and to help destigmatize the way people look at mental health and to um, help spread awareness and let people know they're not alone. And then I'm here for them. Even if that I, I, I'm an open source. If people want to reach out to me, I'm on LinkedIn, Jeannie Walsh. Anybody yes. who wants to can contact me and are I will on, talk to them. Are you on like Facebook or I'm Instagram too? I'm on Instagram too, wrong underscore underscore Jeannie underscore Walsh. And it's okay. with one N, J-E-A-N-I-E. -E. I dream of Jeannie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so also, let me, let's get back to a couple questions here. Um, what would you suggest to anyone who has oh, I can't oh, this mental one. health issues? Okay. Okay. Issue. okay, let's start over again, Frank. It's mental, okay. Sorry, mental health issues. Yeah, I told well, you what, what would you suggest to anyone that has mental health issues? Definitely, the most important thing is to have the right support system. The, uh, and uh, very important to have the right psychiatrist, and you have to take your meds daily. That is crucial to being able to overcome this and to you be able to control the disease and it not control you. Yes, because you balance the whatever chromosome, whatever it is, right? But I understand balanced. why some people don't want to be on the medicine because right. there's the weight gain, there's this, that, and all the side effects, and they don't want to deal with it. But in order to, you know, and I've been the guinea pig for everything for 25 years from every medicine that's out there, and you know what? It just takes it takes time to find the combination that will work for you well I, I went through a divorce a while back it's been about 20 20 some odd years almost 25 years actually and it, in the beginning I had a lot of anxiety stress you know things like that and I couldn't sleep 
and um, I finally got some medication, Ambien I think it was, and it finally let me sleep and then after that I was able to sleep naturally. But it got me going again. It got my there, cycle And there's going. other things that people can do. There's like grounding techniques, which I, I learned through my BBTD classes. And that's like grounding techniques. And if you're having a severe anxiety attack, stop yourself and, okay, what do you hear? What do you taste? What do, what do you feel? What do you see right now? And it pulls you away from the anxiety because you have to think about those questions and answer them. So there's different techniques, and that's actually something that I'm actually working on now is putting something together that has helped me, like a resource for people, like resources, people that they can call, reach out to, organizations, that, um, and things that I've learned that I want to share with other people. So it's like a, a program or a, a structured um, ec exercises to do? Yeah, speaking, like being mindful, grounding techniques, everything, right. yes. Now also, what about uh, like sprouts? that they have healthy food, healthy medications, natural medications, I'm sure, and certain things, Homeopathic, right? Homeopathic, absolutely, absolutely. Can you speak and, about that? Um, uh, well, I don't... Or what, what you use? What, uh, is there I, anything natural that you use? No, I, um, I'm i not afraid to say that. I'm on Brylar. I literally think it's the miracle bri okay. bipolar medicine because okay. I, it has literally turned my world around. And I am such a different person today than I was 20 years ago. And I'm grateful for my doctor. Well, I'll do a little shout out to Dr. Khalid, who okay. um, I was in the test Good. study for that, which is now it's now available to anyone. When it was first out, it was like twelve hundred dollars a bottle. Wow! And I was in the test study, so I got it, and it has changed my life. And I'm very stable right now. But if I miss it, yeah. you'll see. Like, well, can I? You know, I'll go into deep depression. People talk about bipolar, but I'm not really sure what exactly entails bipolar. Is it different types of there's, bipolar? There's bipolar 1 and 2. I'm bipolar 1, which is the worst. Mm. And um, there's the ups and downs. And when I'm down, like I hit and I'm very suic I'm suicidal. I'm like one foot over already. One foot over. But at least wow. I recognize that. And you have to be able to recognize that moment. And be. And I immediately reach out to my doctor. And I'm yeah. not afraid to say that I have been 5150. I've been hospitalized. And it's okay. You know what? You go in there and the art therapy and uh, the, um, you know, working out and even having that little escape from the world, being in the hospital, it it was peaceful. And it, and it helped me a lot. And it has happened several times. And um, the first time was very, very scary. But if you know what to expect, and I'm, I'm more than happy to talk about that stuff at a future time where you can reach out to me, like I said, via LinkedIn. Um, I'm more than happy to talk to anyone about that.